Hi everyone, Tom Wolf here. Now, recently Arturia updated pigments to version 3.5 and one of the improvements that they made with version 3.5 is they improved the distortion effect. Now, before version 3.5, the distortion plugin in pigments was actually very kind of basic and simple but the improvements that they've made to this actually make it a really powerful tool so i thought i would create this video about how to create character in your sounds using the distortion plugin in pigments now character is something that is very important for a synth sound you know it's what kind of distinguishes one sound from another and when you're creating a track you can have a great sound that is just not kind of fitting and a lot of that is because of the character of the sound whether you need to kind of tweak it for the track that you're making or whether it just you know sounds a little bit bland and you need to kind of add a little bit more character to it and this is something that you can do quite easily using the distortion plugin so let's come over to the effects so i've got a basic synth sound here so I've just created it using this cadmium wavetable here and then also running a square wave in the sub oscillator there. And then we're just taking the edge off with a bit of uh, filtering in the multi-mode filter there. So we'll come over to the effects. In previous versions, you had separate distortion, overdrive and wave folding uh, units. Now they've combined all of these into one and added a whole lot more functionality as well. So if we come to this drop down menu here, you can see we've got overdrive and we've got a whole bunch of others here as well. So we've got the overdrive, the distortion, the wave folder and a whole load of different uh, distortion types here. And these are what we can use to kind of shape the character of our sound. So if I play this again. Now, this is the soft clip. So let's just drive that. Here we're kind of adding a lot of buzz to the top end of that sound. So say we come to a different one. So if we come to the overdrive. You can hear we're getting some more kind of crispy top end, but it's also thinning out the lower end as well. And you can see we've got a tone knob here, which also could either darken the sound make it quite a bit brighter um, we've got loads of different types so let's go through some of these as well so the exponential and uh, we've done soft clip so distortion hard clip tape so that's sort of emulating uh, old tape overdrive. Germanium. Asymmetrical. That's got some kind of interesting harmonics around there. And again, we've got some kind of interesting stuff happening there with the wiggle uh wave folder is kind of by far the grittiest really and we can change the shape there as well so that's got a really kind of gnarly sound to it uh dual fold Quite a nice one. Stairs. So that's got a kind of bit crushy feel to it. It's quite a nice area there. So of course you can modulate this as well, the drive. So if you wanted to kind of uh, modulate that kind of tasty sound there, you could do that with an envelope or an LFO or one of the function or random engines in here. Okay, so they've all got kind of familiar characteristics to each other, but especially in these kind of later ones, we get some really sort of interesting harmonics going on, that dual fold one. 
around there you just get a lot of kind of bite to that sound so depending on what you're going for with your sound you can add a lot of characteristics to it just by kind of changing the type of the distortion and playing about with the drive as well and as i say you can automate the drive too so if you want to have that sound kind of that character evolving then you can use that you'll see we've also got it on 50 percent dry wet so we've got an even mix of dry and wet signal there so if we want we can just dial it back or go in full and you can hear it's giving it a much more kind of interesting characteristic already just using a little bit of drive on this distortion unit um we can change the output here but we don't necessarily need to at the moment because we have got the auto gain function on so what this does essentially when you're driving feedback you can see it's measured in decibels here essentially what you're doing is you're adding gain to drive that signal so of course if you don't have the auto gain on what's going to happen is your sound is going to get a lot louder. So that may be something that you want, in which case you can turn the auto gain off and adjust your output on your own. But if you have the auto button on, it will adjust your output so that while you're going through that, the volume stays the same. So a new thing they've also added to the distortion unit is this new filtering section, okay? So we can switch this on here and we've got a choice of low pass, high pass and band pass. And this just lets us, you know, either kind of cut out some of the edgy stuff or just, you know, shape the sound to how we want, which again is going to kind of change the character of the sound. So to get the full effect, let's put it up to 100% wet. And if we turn it off, there we go. So let's actually start with the low pass. So we can really kind of darken that sound off. We can also, of course, add some resonance if we want to. So we can really use that to shape the sound. And there's also a dark button here. So. So that's almost kind of adding like a high cut filter to it. It's just removing the very top end harmonics there. So if you want to just kind of darken that sound off, you want a slightly duller character rather than too gritty, then that's a way that you can achieve that. We've also got routing here. So this essentially sets whether this filter is happening before the signal goes into the distortion or after the signal goes into the distortion. So at the moment, it's set to pre-filtering and you can hear that by... We've still got some kind of top harmonics there. If we were to change that to post, it's completely cut off all the top end there. So nothing kind of escapes above it, really. Which is really good for kind of uh, really dialing it in. But of course, you might just still want those top harmonics and just use that to shape the sound. So then, of course, we've also got the high pass. So we can really kind of remove that low end and just get a really sort of buzzy sound there. And again, of course, you can uh, modulate the cutoff and the resonance here. So if you want to control it with any of your modulation sources, you can do that and have it evolving as the sound plays. We can also put this into post. So we really remove all the low end there. Or a bit of pre, where it still lets them through, but gives us a really kind of character tonality to it. And of course, you can also use the dark button for this. So again, it's kind of like adding a high cut filter. Removes a little bit of that 
sort of top treble that's going on there. And then we've also got a bandpass filter. So we can set the resonance kind of nice and high for this. And we can get some really nice harmonic content using this. And of course, if you put it into post, it's a lot less gnarly, a lot kind of cleaner. But of course, if that's what you're looking for, then that is the way to achieve it. But I quite like it with this really disgustingly kind of gritty sound there. And then of course, you can then dial back the wet amount. So that's our raw sound. can just use it to kind of shape. And of course, if I wanted to, I could add extra drive. Or change the characteristics. If that's a bit too much for you, you can dial it back a bit. So that is how you can use Arturia's new and improved distortion unit in pigments to shape your sounds, to get them to fit your track, to add some character to them. As you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you're an Arturia Pigments user. Now, as a Pigments user, you can get new free presets every single month by signing up to my Synth Vault. To find out more information, just head to synthvault.net. Until next time, take care.